Hi and welcome, it's Jo here at willycottage.com in Cumbria, uh, the north of England for anybody that lives overseas and watches my videos. Um, today is episode 8 of Back to Basics. I know it's been a bit delayed, um, should have had one out the other week there, but I did a live chat last week and hopefully you've caught that when I did a bit of a demo on how to dye and make stock solution for faded um, dye pots. Whether you use, you can apply it to yarns and to your rovings, even locks as well if you want to, not a problem at all. Sorry, I've got a bit of a niche going on. Um, right, so back to basics. So I'm doing spinning, it's the theme that we're at the moment, and I thought I would do um, a plying up a single but using a different type of yarn. Today I have got a ball of, it is a manufactured yarn but it's a nice hairy yarn and I use this type of yarn sometimes when I'm doing core spinning which I'll do that on my next video as a core spin and I will ply that as a coil as well okay but I'm using this one today it is an acrylic based yarn but it has been blended with a merino and alpaca um, so I'm doing that I'm going to ply that so you get a nice rippled sort of effect with the yarn okay um, and I'm spinning up my single slightly thicker than what I'd normally do so it sort of transits with this and you get a nice effect and then I'm going to do another spinning demo of how to make a single um, a single yarn but as a thick and thin or a slub yarn okay um, and I'm using I've got some mini bats left over from putting together a selection the other day there so I had to take one out so I could re-blend it through I'll take this one out and I'll go with the really light one here sticking with that theme of all these purple and evening colours for when we finally get around to doing the weaving project so that's quite dark I'll go with this light one so I'll be doing this one as a thick and thin slub yarn and then I'm going to apply that as well so you can see um, the different look that you can go off and have a try yourself with whatever you've got at home now we'll get on to the top topic of what you can apply with which is anything um, in a bit when we get onto this one but at the moment I'm just finishing off the last of this bit of bat that I've got and I'll tilt you down so you can see what I'm doing excuse the girls in the background the Scotty's got a piece of fabric because I was sewing up project bag yesterday she's playing with that like nobody's business and Iona's got the itches she needs a tea tree bath so excuse my girls in the background they are a pair of delinquents and they just can't help themselves right so I'm just gonna get this going okay and I'm going to just draft out this little bit of bat a bit more. Now we've all seen me do singles before, so there's nothing new, okay? Um, I'm spinning in a clockwise direction, so it's going in the Z twist. And I'm not doing my usual very, very fine um, drafting. I'm just keeping my fingers a little bit looser, which is a good tip for those who find that they always spin very very fine and just can't seem to get that thickness bit just loosen the tension on your finger i'm just going to slow this spin down while i'm talking right okay so i've got some notes on the side here i'm just going to spout them off as i go along with them doing this last little piece so spinning singles some of the twist will be dis uh, discharged or displaced when you ply it later on so in that case, do your twist back occasionally to make sure that you have enough twist in your finished yarn so that when you do ply it, it has a decent energy in it, but it's not over energized, okay? So I'm doing this on my wheel today. I've, I'm not sleeping properly at the moment, so my hips have been sore. Um, so what you can do is you pull out a length of your yarn, okay? and can you see that I'll put it up against my shirt and I've pulled it's back I don't know about four inches worth and I'm just going to twist it around to see what it looks like if I was to ply it and that'll tell me whether I've got too much twist in there and there I've got a really decent yarn I'm going to lift this up I've got a really nice energy in that look how, how straight that sits so once that has been washed or steam set, it's going to have a lovely drape and balance in there, okay? So everybody has their own way of um, counting 
the treadles which is what I usually do but because I'm using my electric wheel today because I can't I, I can't sit down my hips are too sore I do a lot of my work that's why a lot of my work tops are all at this waist height for me um, it, I just find it easier now I've ended up tangling up my singles so yeah you want to do that every so often as you're spinning just once in a blue moon as you're spinning along just to make sure that you've got the balance right on your spin okay as I say just loosen off your fingers a little bit so you could take in a little bit more thickness a, a wider dimension on your single yarn especially if you're going to use it as a single you don't want it too thin um, because once it settles and you've washed it and you're hot cold water and it's done that semi felting then it might be, it might get too tangled I think that this dimension is roughly about a millimeter and a half wide is a really perfect thickness for doing singles that would give you um, just shy of a four ply um, yarn it's not quite a lace weight but it's not quite a four ply so in that in between sort of stage and obviously <coughs> once it's been washed it blooms a little as well okay so also it's critical to do your little spin test every so often as well um, you, you apply back on yourself um, because it's full of energy and if you did it with a bobbin that has been sat for a while and you're going to spin it up and, to, and apply it then that energy is already settled down and you're not going to end up with a really true example afterwards you're best doing it while it's fresh and you're doing um, you're spinning straight off as your single to start with while you're actively doing it and then you'll get a really good true sample yarn um, later on okay um, especially if you're wanting to two ply or three ply later you're going to have a true sense of the, the yarn balance that you've got in there if you were to do it after it's been settled for a couple of days the twist is settled down a little bit you'll find that there'll be sections that have over energy too much energy in there and it's at a, a stage where it's maybe a little bit too late to actually um, sort that distribute that energy out evenly um, but yeah so by doing your little ply back test whilst you're spinning then you know that you're on the right track so once it's sat there for a couple of days afterwards then you're going to get a true characterization of the yarn that you're going to get um, and a note as well I'll just stop this for a second uh, just a note to help you to keep your bobbin balanced right There's two reasons why you want to do this you want to keep moving your flyer hooks if you've got movable ones or you've got static ones like I do have on my Kromsky flyers um, you want to reposition your yarn on your hooks or move your hooks up and down on a regular basis and what that does it stops a build up of the, the yarns okay getting too high to the point where the yarn starts to fall off the back of it okay um, it'll slip down and what will do is start creating crevices in between the little sections as you're plying a lot as you're spinning along and filling up your bobbin and what that can also do at the end is when you're finished and you let your yarn go at the very end it might get lost inside your crevice and then you're going to be there forever looking for it what you could do is get a little piece of sellotape and just wrap it around your end so if you're going to leave it on your bobbin for a couple of days then you know exactly where it's going to be because the sellotape's on then it'll just pull off you don't lose a couple of tiny bits of fibre it's not a big deal okay so I'm just going to finish off this little piece here and I'm going to put it on to my lazy cape and then I'm going to ply it with this mohair merino sorry alpaca merino acrylic blended yarn that I've got All right there we go and let go of that and I'll just loosen off my tension and we'll do that test again I'll bring it over so you can see so we've got a good length I'm not just going to let it go you could use um, you know your flyer hook for threading your fibre through you could use that to give a balance because it's got that piece of um, wood on the end of it usually unless you bought yourself an arty farty one for Vetsy uh, but there you go 
there's my balance and it's quite happy it's not twisting on in itself and I'm really quite happy with that as a single I would probably give it a little bit more twist maybe if I really felt like it but I think ratio wise that's about five treadles um, from drafting to inserting through the orifice and I'm, I'm very happy with that balance that's my usual type of balance um, I don't usually go over tight on it as a rule um, depends on what, on what I'm looking for from my yarns or what I want to knit with it um, if you want to knit socks or mittens you're going to want to put a, couple, a bit more twist in it because the energy actually does help give you a stronger yarn um, but we'll get into the logistics of that another time and a bit more on the, uh, the terminology of the S twist and the, the Z twist and what it can do because it can apply to both weaving and knitting and crochet as to the different ways that you can apply okay um, as to what effects it gives to the pro uh, the project that you've got in mind so you bear with me a second i'll just take these over swap them over put a fresh bobbin on and i will get going on the next bit okay so i've started this off already i'm just going to move up to the next section on my flyer so i'm not filling up one area too much in one go and simple as you're just plying as usual and I'm holding my mixed wool and it's like a semi coil I'm, I'm just letting the wool sit itself on top of the yarn and it gives it this spiral effect and this is really what the basis is of you doing a core spin as well because you're just putting your wool your yarn over the top of another and letting it twist and all the energy will go out there and this is just a really lovely spiral yarn that I'm creating you could just ply it as usual um, the best thing about doing this type of using your hand spun with a manufactured yarn or a yarn you may have bought from um, a dyer which is generally it is still it is still a manufactured yarn they've not spun it themselves but like a mohair or something like that where you don't want a lot of fuzz and halo in your knitted project or your weave but you want to just sort of bring that down a tone or two by adding in some of your hand spun wool and it thickens up that ply because usually it's something like a a singles mohair or a singles um, alpaca does have um, a halo on it that can be quite overwrought um, and I'm sorry that's not what I'm looking for that wasn't what I'm looking for can be very thin um, and not a lot of people like to knit with a very thin so by adding your single thin yarn to it on the second I'm gonna have to just boost up my energy a bit while I'm just talking there we go there we are um, it helps thicken up and you'll be able to create yourself it will be a two ply but in essence it will have the diameter of a four ply yarn um, which means that you might find it easier and you can go up a couple of needle sizes um, when you're actually working with it so what I'm doing at the moment is I'm spinning plying this hand spun yarn onto my mixed blend yarn at a I would say about a 25 to 30 degree angle so I'm just holding it slightly out from where I need to be I'll grab the candle at uh, the candle the camera and change the angle of this in a minute I'm just getting over twist I've got sections on my yarn it's a little bit twisty but I know that they're going to even themselves out in a minute I'm just trying to find my rhythm and I will move the position of the, the camera so you can see the effect that I'm getting the thing is with this camera I can't really get any closer so bear with me a second and I will um, maneuver you to a position where you can actually see what it is that I'm doing and the effect that I'm getting on this yarn okay so I'm just going to turn my wheel on and I've literally got 
see my core yarn there in my hand this one here that I'm holding and I'm letting it balance over the top of my index finger and the wool that I've just spun is literally a, I would say that's about a 25 to 30 degree angle and it's just resting on top of the manufactured yarn and creating a spiral can you see that oops can you see so you're getting a spiral effect on your yarn so it's still a single this sort of spinning using something like a mohair why it is going again what's it ah that's what it is my guided slit um i find doing this type of yarn i think i might have explained it a minute ago um but i've just filmed five minutes worth of stuff and realized i hadn't pressed play <laughs> i'll record oh joe you are a wombat um yeah so if you've got something like a hand dye yarn from us from somebody like me and they've done it on a singles um mohair or a singles alpaca where you've got a lot of halo in there but that you think that the yarn's too thin that you're not happy with knitting with it well get your hand spun out do yourself a lovely singles yarn um like this and apply them both together um if it's one of those that's been speckled or something pick a color out of there that you really like the look of and honestly it will look fantastic plied with your hand spun wool um if a rover that you've got that you really love and you've not been able to find anything to go with it yet they've got a very similar tone in a hand spun singles that you've bought you're not quite sure what to do with it we'll spin it up it will be just a two ply yarn but it will give you the consistency of a four ply yarn when you're knitting it up so you can go up a size in your needles um i do know sometimes that if you're knitting with needles that are any less than a 2.5 they can actually put a little bit strain on your hands but you just ever so gently you've got this little triangle and that's all i'm doing just let my forefinger be its guide my thumb's not really doing anything apart from just holding it when i'm guiding it into the orifice and there's my little triangle there on my fingers creating a spiral but to say it's good for doing those sort of yarn jobs where you want the your yarn that you've bought is just too thin there we go so i'm going to carry on with this and i'll catch you on the other side and we will um have a go at some thick and thin yarn okay You'll know just what you do, you do to me Play my emotions like a pair of puppets strings Did it ever occur to you, my heart's more than a toy Please go easy on me, babe Send message after message, forward my call Next day you'll hear me back like nothing happened at all what about all the things you used to say to me? This ain't the way it's supposed to be. And you know, I wouldn't do that to you. You know, I wouldn't treat you that way. No, I've been running, can't catch up. Oh, love, what I won't do. Brought me closer to you. Distance is killing me, you make it so hard. Won't you let me love you, baby? Used to be optimistic, these days I just don't know. Pick a fence in the valley, I hope it's losing its hold. You know, the mother's girls love you like I do. 
can afford to give up on me. And you know, I wouldn't do that to you. And you know, I wanna treat you that way. No, I've been burning, can't catch up. Oh, love, what I won't do. Chasing waterfalls. Oh, 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 you got me. Chasing waterfalls. Oh, 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 you got me. Chasing waterfalls. Oh, you got me. Chasing waterfalls. So there we go, so there we have a lovely spiralled yarn. Can you see how the hand spun sitting in spirals over the top of essentially what is a core, a core underneath that. So there we go, that just needs steam set or washed and then put to one side for future comment videos. So I'm just going to put that to one side now with one of the other ones that we've done in the past okay so I've just been down for a cup of coffee because I've had a really sore throat the last couple of weeks right what we're going to do next is a thick and thin yarn and then I'm going to apply it so if you want to use I like to use my bats and because all the fibers have gone in the same direction and that's just for doing a thick and thin yarn that's what you're looking for though you can do thick and thin yarn with any type of fibers that you've got around the place okay but essentially the best one to use is the yarn uh, the fibers that have been drum carded or a wool roving top a uh, roving of wool top um, they've all gone in a straight line and it just makes your life a little bit easier So go and get your roving same principle as this um, Or get yourself a bat and tear it into strips Ideally you don't want it much thicker than the dimension the width, thickness of your thumb just to make your life easier So I'm just going to pull this down in another strip Okay There we go. Ooh, pull that apart so it looks, ends up looking roughly about an inch wide. That's really a great place to start to get a nice slub effect of your wool. I don't know why the dogs are going bonkers. Okay, this, because it's a bat, it's more or less pre-drafted for me anyway. So I'm going to get it set up on the wheel and then I'll get back to you in a second. Okay, so when you're spinning up your thick and thin yarn, you want to make sh try and make sure that you've got a consistent thickness. You don't want to go really, really thin, but nice and loose on your single. Okay, and then what I'm just going to turn down my speed a little bit. If you tread a, a little bit slower, but have your tension on really, really well, and then turn your hand so you create a nice large piece on it, turn your hand, and you end up a slubby piece. And you don't want too much twist in that, you want more twist in your thinner sections. Okay, I'm going to do that again. So I'm going to twist my hand so I end up with a looser section. You see that nice thick piece there? And I'm just going to 
spinner thins. You want to make sure your hand's pretty close so you've got a bit more control at this section of your orifice. I think I could probably get away with doing a bit faster than that, otherwise we're going at the snail's pace. So have your tension pretty decent on the back on your Scotch tension or your Irish tension so it actually takes up your will. But you want to tread a little bit slower, okay? Turn your hand towards you, pull the section back and run your hand down. Don't grip it, just run your hand down and you get a gentle twist in there. And I'm going to do it again. One sec, there we go. One section there, a nice lumpy piece. And then I'm just going to spin as usual and put a bit more twist in those sections. And those sections will actually help hold in that slubby piece of yarn. Okay, so we're going to do it again. I'm going to draft the back a bit and then come down to the thinnest section. There we go. And then spin on as usual. I'll bring you around to another angle in a bit once I get onto another strand. I'm just going to spin a bit more. Now I'm going to tilt my hand, pull back my fibre until you've got a weaker spot where it's transparent, a weaker spot, okay? Where you can actually see through it. So again, so if I pull that, pull that back, you can see where it's thicker there and it gets really quite thin there. That's a nice piece of slob. And then spin back normal, spin back normal, spin back normal. And then a nice slobby piece again. And that will twist around. There we go. And back down to a thin piece. Okay. So I'm going to do that again. I'm just going to grab a piece of fibre. And I'm going to join that. I'm going to turn this up a little bit higher and join that on. Spin on about 20 30 centimeters of normal thin. And now I'm going to pull back my, my fibre and let that ever so slightly twist in. There we go. And go. Another 20 30 centimeters of normal thin. Okay, and then pull back my fibre and let that slubby bit go through. Again, back to a bit of thin. You can make little slobs, you can just do little ones. Why would you need? thick and thin yarn you say well it makes the most amazing textures when you're knitting um, thick and thin yarns especially for the artistic approach and when you're an artistic an artistic spinner and you want it for different applications whether it's for weaving with or or knitting or artisan crochet then you've always got to think out the box as to how can you make something look a little bit different so on that regard, this sort of fibre and this type of spinning, it's just a little bit of freedom spinning. It's not having any rules. It's just understanding a technique and what it's going to do for you. Oh, yeah. Um, and the look it's going to give you at the end of it. So I'm just going to pull that back and do a nice, big, long, slubby piece. And again here. And they go back onto my thin bit. I'll move the camera so you can see what it is that I'm doing, hopefully, from a more close-up position. Okay, so I'm going to get my yarn, I'm going to get my, I'm just going to push my flyer up a little bit because that real still it is to any type of yarn spinning is make sure you you bring your wool up on the flyer often and at regular individual, at intimate times just to make sure that you've got a nice balance on your, so I'll try and do it left handed or right handed because I'm high on right handed. Um, Move your hand and you've got a nice slubby piece. Move your hand towards you and you've got a nice slubby piece. Move your hand towards you and you have a nice slubby piece. And again. And again. Right, so I'm just going to stop it there because I need to take my orifice reducer off the front. 
of my bobbin now because some of these are getting too big I'm gonna just attach this again here which will do itself because there's lots of energy in there already you see you've got the twist in here and you're thin so I'm just gonna run that out it's still got a hold of my slubby ends I'm quite happy with just a couple of twists in there and I'm gonna get my wheel to take that in there we go and back to normal so I'm just spinning down as I would do normally nice thin sections okay and then I'm gonna grip I'm gonna grip with my fingers here and just clench a piece so it ends up with a really weakened spot you can just about see my finger through that that's more or less how thin you want it to be and then you're going to glide your hand over the top of that slubby bit as as it's spinning down to that weakened section and then you're going to start spinning as usual okay do a bit more and again and um, so in, in essence what you're doing is turning your hand towards yourself and it's you it's helping you sort of draft is really what you're doing draft your fiber out so you end up with a really thick piece and a very thin piece down here and the will the spin will create a very gentle twist in that fiber okay and then go back to spinning normally let me just give that a yank through pull that up there make sure my tension is as tight as i can get it without it going too far okay is it taking it there we go so again turn the hand towards me and gently go down turn the hand towards me and come down to that weakest point and again and again and then just spin as usual there's a thicker piece there nice little slob you can do tiny slobs you can do big slobs i'll grab another piece you spin that on there and spin some normal thin pieces for a little bit and then just pull gently make a little slob and then spin away make a little slob and then spin away pull it towards me make a little slob and then spin away you really don't want right so staple length say your staple length is 10 centimeters on your wool that i.e the length of the fibers in your roving okay say it's 10 centimeters just for talk's sake you want your slub not to be any longer than the staple length because it won't twist there'll be you would have run out of will for the the length of the um, fibers so roughly say that you want a slub about five centimeters long and the next two sections the full section afterwards has got a load of high twist in it because there isn't much twist in that slubby area there we go there's another piece i'll do another one there we go that's about four centimeters there's not much twist in that section so you don't want to lose the length of the staple length that's going into it so i'm just going to spin out a little bit thinner thin up yeah so if you you don't want you generally don't want your, your your big slobby section to be any longer than the staple length of the wheel that you're spinning because it won't hold in place okay because it is an area that has very little spin in there and i'm going to spin on a little bit more so just keep that in mind you can do little tiny ones that are not much bigger than the first part of your thumb you can do large pieces you can do them really really thick but don't let them get any larger than the length of your staple length as a general rule because they just won't hold any of the mild energy that's in that section it'll just fall apart so again 
I'm going to twist my camera around to the other side so you can see what it is that I'm doing from my normal spinning side because I suppose it is quite hard. So I'm going to pull back and I've got a nice slobby piece and then spin away. Pull my hand back, a nice slobby piece and spin away. I've got a little bit left, I will move you around so you can see what it is I'm doing from the other side. Okay, so with my yarn, I'm going to turn this down a little bit more. I'm going to get this going, stick this in there. So, as it's collecting the twist, I'm just going to draft out as usual. Okay, draft, 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 draft out to a normal thin yarn. Then I'm going to pinch and draft, turning my hand towards me, find the weakest point in my fibre, pinch it so I can draft out so I can start continuing on a thin piece. Okay, but all the energy has run out of there. I know that the energy was going into there when I was pinching, but because I've now brought my hand down and drafted at the same time, uh, the energy has run out of there into here. So I'll do that again. I'm going to twist my hand towards me, find the weakest point in that, let that slug build up, pinch this section so I can start drafting down. Draft, 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 draft. Turn the hand towards me, draft out, find the weakest section on that drafting, pinch that there for a second and draft it back so I can get back into thick and thin and all that fibre, that energy in that section of slob ran straight out. Right, there we go. Once more, I've got a bit left. So I'll turn my hand towards me, draft this fibre out backwards, run the spin down the slob until I find my weakest point. Then I'm going to pinch this right here so I can start drafting thin again. And you can see that fell out of that slob piece. So don't worry about it looking like it's gonna have lots of energy in it. Once you move your finger down and start drafting to the thin again, let that energy run out before you let it go into the orifice and then onto your bobbin, okay? Not too much, but enough just for it to settle. Right, there we go. So what I'm gonna do now is put this bobbin that's full, this one here, which is now full of yarn, onto my laser cake, and I'm gonna get that wool that I had earlier on that I was plying with, and I'm gonna apply that onto there, okay? Okay, so I'm using the same wool that I used on the skin earlier on, um, the alpaca merino and acrylic blended wool, because it's nice and hairy. So I'm just gonna stick it up in my box down the bottom of my feet because it's just easier to have it in there. Now you are essentially doing the exact style of spin using this yarn as your core. So it's straight in your hand, okay? In your right hand or your left hand, whichever hand you prefer to spin in. I wish I could do a mirror and then you could see what it is for a left-handed person. <laughs> right, so essentially you're doing the exact same style of spinning. You're spinning from the bobbin onto here. But instead of doing a small triangle like a 30 degrees this time, okay, you're going in at a right angle. You are going in straight like that. And you're going to use your thumb and your finger to help guide the fibre on so it sits like a coil and wraps itself around your will. Now, have a decent tension on there, but don't spin too fast, not to start with until you get used to it. But you're literally layering this onto... Hold on a sec, why is it decided it doesn't want to pull? Ah, that's because I've got a gigantic coil on this. Okay. And it is literally a 45 degree angle that this wool is now going to sit on top of this coil wool. And I'm just going to let that sit on there. And there you have a nice big lumpy beehive in the essence that's what you've got i'll turn you around so you can see on the other side in a little bit because i think this is a little bit dark on this side of my um 
my wheel with the lights. So back to doing a 45 degree. I think we're going to have to help this piece through. This is not the best spinning wheel to be doing this work on. But as I say earlier on, I have got such a sore back at the moment. I just can't sit down. So I'm just going to encourage that around. Spin some more of this so the energy goes out. Right, get going again. Here's another slubby piece coming now. Right angle, straight across and let that build up on there and then come down. And there you, the thin pieces are starting to sit on top like a coil all the way on top of my core yarn. I've got another bit of slub coming. I'm going to just hold a sec, it's got itself jammed again. It's fine, bear with me. We'll get there. Right, so here's another piece coming now. This will definitely need a helping hand in the way through. And there we go. One lovely little coil, it looks like a little shell. So I'm going to have to help this one through in a minute. And start building up my thins again. On here, I'm going to help this big fatty through. Just give it a yank. Let my layer in down on my yarns. Pull that through now that I've got a bit more length in there. Okay, and off I go again. I would usually have this sped up a little bit quicker for me because I'm trying to show you how I'm doing it. Right, here's some tiny little slubby pieces. So I'm just going to let them sit and rotate over the top of each other. There we go. And just let them feed on. Nice and gently does it. And they've got to sit next to each other. You could turn your hand back a little bit in an angle and then that stops the yarn from trying to bypass your finger when you're spinning it through. It would help if I had a little bit more motion in my wheel, but I will sort that out in a second. I have got another piece. I think I've got a jam. Yep, we've got a traffic jam delay going on up here. I'll just feed that through. Here's another piece of big, fat, slubby yarn going on there again give myself a decent bit of length because I'm gonna have to feed that bit through again so I'm gonna stop it there feed this piece through Another bit of slubby yarn here. Right, there we go, that will be stuck. So I will um, catch you in a minute. Okay, so I'll get it going again. I'm using, tilting my finger back, my hand back so that my yarn sits on top. Keep going backwards. Just giving myself a bit more control by tilting my hand back. I've got another slubby piece coming. So I literally just let it roll on where it feels comfortable. And then that's it. We've got, a, we've got a jam right it's nearly out but not all the way there we go and you just keep doing that until you get to the end. 
I've got just under half a bobbin fill of fibre that I need to do. We've got some really thick slobby pieces coming now. I'm going to get on with this and I will catch you on the other side. You know just what you do, you do to me Play my emotions like a pair of puppet strings Did it ever occur to you, my heart's more than a toy Please go easy on me, babe Send message after message, forward my call Next day you hear me back like nothing happened at all what about all the things you used to say to me? This ain't the way it's supposed to be And you know I wouldn't do that to you You know I wouldn't treat you that way, no I've been running, can't catch up Oh love, what I won't do And waterfall. Oh, you got me chasing waterfall. All of the times I've been there, times I came through, I'd meet you anywhere if it brought me closer to you. Distance is killing me, you make it so hard. Won't you let me love you, babe? Used to be optimistic These days I just don't know Pick a fence in the valley I hope it's losing its hold You know the mother girls will love you like I do Can't afford to give up on you And you know I wouldn't do that to you You know I wanna treat you that way, no I've been running, can't catch up Oh love, what I won't do Oh, you got me Chasing waterfalls Oh, you got me Chasing waterfalls So I wouldn't, as a rule, I wouldn't wash this in the sink. I like to steam set my wool. So I use this little travel kettle that has a steam attachment to it. And you can see it helps to relax all the energy. You see it all moving. There's a lot more efficient way of doing it as well. And it means that once it's done, I can take it off the steam and let it adjust chill out and relax and just making sure and that all the steam, there we go, hits that. Now I wouldn't use 
and steam method if you've only got 3D printed or plastic midi noddies. So you want to do this on a wooden midi noddy because the steam gets so hot. There we go. You can see that moving. It's magic, isn't it? And that just helps relax the fibres, takes out any excess energy that may still be in there from doing the spinning. I just flip it around. There you go, that yarn is a lot more relaxed. There we go. So I will let this hang and let the steam settle on the yarn um, and dry out as it would do. And then I can use it whenever I want to. So there we go, two yarns made up today in my demonstration. I hope that helped a few of you that have never attempted or are new to spinning before or just couldn't get the hang of what it was that you needed to do um, in explanation or just the manoeuvres, the mechanics of the things with your hands. As I say, a top tip for people that have been spinning for a long time and you, you do spin thinly, consistently and find it hard to... Sorry, flaming dog, get down. Uh, find it hard to um, relax, just... Don't pinch so hard uh, when you're drafting and spinning your fibres into the orifice. Just relax them a little bit and you'll find that you, your, um, your, spinning, your fibres will collate a little bit thicker um, and you'll end up being able to be a bit more dexterous when it comes to doing your spinning. Um, top tips that I mentioned. Remember to not do any wider than the dimension of your thumb, so roughly about an inch um, when stripping your rovings or your bats down. Um, and to always move your hooks and your flyers, with your yarn guide up and down your flyer to even out a distribution, otherwise you might end up losing your yarn end. And steam kettle. I travel steam um, kettle with the steam attachment, perfect. That cost me about £16 and I bought that a couple of years ago and I use it all the time. I very rarely wash any of my hand spun wool now because I just can't be bothered waiting to the next day and I generally do it on the day so I can knit or work with it straight away or just put it to one side for the project that I want to do. Um, but yeah, that's it. So if you like this video, please do hit that like. It does help other people find me. Um, I think I'm about 475 at the moment, so I've got about 15 more to do before I come up with some sort of um, giveaway on my website, um, which will include some sort of discount code or something like that, but just to one person. And I will um, mention how that's going to run, probably something like a, a comment or something below. Um, or, yeah, a comment down below, and then I can reach out to you and um, send you the link for that. But when I get to 500, that's what I'll be doing. So take care of yourselves. Don't forget to hit that subscribe. Live chat next week. Um, and I'm going to be dabbling a little bit of um, dyeing some chunky iron yarn that I've got to follow on from the video that I did last week. I will be doing dyeing videos um, later on down the, t uh, down the line, but not at this current moment. But I do, do do them now and again on my live chats, especially upon request from customers or my regular viewers. So take care of yourselves, um, have a lovely week, and I shall see, oh, watch out for um, my social media. It's my birthday this weekend on Sunday, the day after the king gets cor um, coronated, um, and I'm doing a, give, uh, a discount code that will go live on my social media accounts. I did send out an email to anybody that um, subscribes to my website and it is uh, buy two, get one free. So if you put three items in your cart, you'll get the cheapest item free. If you put six items in your cart, you'll get your two cheapest free. That's generally how it's supposed to work. Um, and remember that UK orders, once you reach that £40 um, plus in your purchases, you always get free um, 
free postage. So I'm off. Take care of yourselves. And I shall see you in a fortnight's time for a new upload video. Bye-bye.